Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Lonnie Boy's house show. That's right. We're here. We got fresh news. We've got inside. We've got inside. We've got everything you need to know about the world of professional wrestling. To my left, it's Mafia Bob. To my right, right hook Ray. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to jump right into this. AEW holding their own in that Wednesday time slot. Boys, mm -hmm. I'm telling you right now, if I look at the grades, I look at the ratings, I look at the critics and what's going on, they're getting savvy comments. They're getting higher grades and higher marks. And I'm going to tell you why. They're actually wrestling. Are we really it, still counting? It's amazing. This isn't like the new flavor of pizza that's come out of Domino's. They're actually wrestling. And I'm going to, I'm going to say this. They get their matches right to it. The, fir the first 30 minutes of AEW isn't somebody uh, narrating a storyline, their anger and their revenge. It's got to stop. They got to get to it. Case in point, the Bailey match the other night with Carmella was phenomenal. Phenomenal. Did they need the other 15 minutes with that? With the Alexa Bliss. They need the uh, moment of bliss. They need I the know. back. You know, the no, that match was crazy good. But also, is having crazy chaos, confusing tag matches to open up the show any better? Tag matches, they don't make much sense. Well, the tag matches are tag matches. I mean, all right. I mean, you're, you're talking about the uh, the Omega, uh, you know. And I feel horrible because I'm a big Omega Bucks fan, and I've been saying forever that if they ever got a chance to perform in, perform in the States, they, they would be great. And it's been lackluster, especially with Kenny Omega. I don't know. In a tag team. Uh, in a tag team, and just it seems anything that he touches has just been... I watch, I watch it just to watch Adam Jones. Yeah, I mean, Hangman Page, especially now, is this drunk. Or, why do I say Adam Jones? <laughs> because they're both kind of the same. Because you think of a defensive back from <laughs> yeah. the Cincinnati Bengals. I don't know. You know, they're, they're doing this drunk Waylon Jennings thing, and it's kind of cool. It is but, pretty cool. I mean, he connects with the audience. But I and, and here it is. It's more organic, him connecting with the audience, than doing a, you know, <laughs> Well, I mean, I, I hope I hope I hope they don't make this into a joke, because he could be a Steve Austin, but they're asking creative to not screw things up. Well, that's the whole thing. Missed. He can be who he is, and and you know, the Hangman is being who he is. Trying to be an Austin, that's not going to happen. Yeah. But he is being who he is, and he's connecting with the crowd, and they love him, and they swarm to him. I'm telling you again. I listen to crowd noise, and I listen to crowd level. With the exception of fans up in Canada who love their wrestling, those people are on their seat. They're out of their seat and they're having a good time. Yeah. Some of these audiences, Ray, I'm hearing the same thing. I'm hearing crickets. I'm hearing crickets. And whose fault is that? That's the writers. <laughs> That's the writers. We're going to address that because we have a special episode of Stars on Thumbs. Uh, we're going to be visited by Drew McIntyre a little bit later. Enjoy. Not a big fan of his, are you? Yeah. No, I like Drew McIntyre. Again, and I'm going to tell you why, and I'm going to explain it. it. Took long enough. It's on my list of things to read. <laughs> so, all right, let's take. <laughs> well, the women's division are trying to start to clean it up a little bit more and get a little bit more definition. Uh, I mean, Dr. Britt Baker now is going to be, it seems, you know, the number one contender moving herself up to go against Nia Rose, who actually won the title. Right. Which it taken forever. <laughs> it's about time. Yeah. They, they just need to just ixnay this division it's not a sexist comment it's just it's horrible you've been selling us that a 98 pound girl that's cutting science class is <laughs> this irresistible force it just it's too late that's why you just cut he gets paid the big bucks for that kind of commentary right it there just, it is and it's like oh it's this 98 pound girl taking on this massive monster but isn't that because though they really didn't have any other talent to they really didn't have a well of talent. They, right? they also didn't go out and get certain talent. I mean, they've got Swole. I mean, she's, she's rough around the edges. She's rough around the edges. Chris Statland is rough, rough around the she's edges. She's rough around the edges. Awesome Kong is gone when they had a golden opportunity to use her to build the division, and they went in this. But the butcher and the baker and the candlestick maker, <laughs> they, got, they got the bunny. Yeah, like, I, 
I'm, you don't like the bunny? I mean... I like the bunny. I mean, the bunny's... The, the bunny's the, all right. I don't, yeah, the, but the butcher, the baker, the baker candlestick maker, no. I can do without, and also Dark Order, too. Yeah. Yeah, the Dark Order... I'd throw them right they're, in. They're, they're, yeah. yeah, they're trying to tweak the Dark Order a little bit. Well, then tweak it by putting it in like a trash can. It's not... Yeah, just cut your losses right now. It's not working. Um, you're not going to sell T-shirts. That's your just, bottom line. It, it's just anytime they come on the screen, it isn't like a a classic boo hate. It's almost like I don't want you. I don't want to see it. That's right. about yeah. that's about the only downside I see to that right now. And listen, AEW keeps the action going. That's what they've been good. I mean, look at what they. You know, if you're not following Chris Jericho and what he's got going on, you've got oh. the other wrestlers. You've got the other heels that are actually coming on. I would say the best thing probably on on the show has been the. Cody and MJF thing because it's a MJF kind of is hilarious. Yeah. He He's is great. a natural. And again, folks, and if, like I said, take lessons on organic. Being a jerk organically, it he works. is it. He's good. Chris Jericho is that person organically. MJF is everything the Miz wishes he was. That's Period. actually a good point. Period. That that's a good point. He's everything the Miz dreamed. The Miz being serious be. with like the Daniel Bryan thing is really awkward. Yeah. Because I can't see him being yeah. serious. Yeah, I just. I mean, you you didn't sell it to me that you were afraid that your daughter was being chased down by uh, Bray Wyatt. It just didn't. It is what it is. Just go back to the real world, channel. All right, let's uh, let's jump over to uh, just. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. <laughs> All right. He's from Cleveland. Well, that'll explain a lot, too. Hey, WrestleMania's right around the corner. We've got to talk about that here in a little bit. We've got Super Showdown, and we've got Elimination Chamber, which these middle pay-per-views have been absolutely awful. Mm -hmm. Absolutely Elimination awful. Chamber usually follows through. I wish they would stop going over to Saudi Arabia. I don't understand it. Well, I do. It's oh, there's money, money over there. there. Yeah, it's yeah. money. There's okay. money over in that sand. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, they're, they're adding the women in. And they're actually letting the women participate, which I applaud them for finally coming into the 18th century. Thank you. Participate, not fully. Yeah. But they're able to go in and participate, which, like I said, it's that's a huge step in a country like that. It is. That is. And just my my fear of this Goldberg Bray Wyatt match is that uh, we're gonna uh, see something. Why? Yeah. Why do we have to bother with it until then? Can't you just say you're gonna do it then? <laughs> They get Bray Wyatt on some other stuff, which actually, like I said, Bray Wyatt, I've come around to the Firefly Funhouse and Bray Wyatt in the it's entertainment It's a miracle. Am I, it's a miracle, am I, guys. Am I still there? What's going Well, first of all, they've gotten better at it. Yeah. You know, they get him in with a Daniel Bryan, and Daniel Bryan makes him look better. They are a great combination to work well together. That was one of the best matches I've seen him in. Still not overly over the top athletic. But it was a brutal. It was a brutal match. Yeah. All right. Um, Yowie, wow! He's finally coming around the corner. That's right. Yeah, wow. Yeah, wow. I'm not an easy sell like you. You know, you see somebody that looks like I'm an easy know, sell. Somebody that's in Slytherin House from Harry Potter with a wand, Experiomus, and it's got you know water on their hair and you know in a black cloak. You know. They all do that. Though. Bret Hart had that too. You know. Yeah. Just Bret saying. Hart was a legend. I don't care. He wore pink. All right. It doesn't. Okay. Are let's. We, let's <laughs> we need to discuss that, though. I want to discuss the, what Ray's theory with Goldberg, and I hope it's not true. All right. All right. We'll skip ahead to that. That's fine. Let, let's let's I, let's talk about that elephant in the room right now. My fear is that we're gonna get Goldberg comes out, Chance, Bray, Spear. 20 seconds, he's champ, it sets up. That's something. not going to happen. Well, I, I don't, I would like it to be Bray upsets Goldberg or we get a DQ. It's going to be a DQ or a schmoz. Just anything but Spear, Jackhammer, good night, and then he goes into WrestleMania with, with the title. He's not there. I We don't need another old part-timer taking <laughs> away a major title. Wow. That's that's brutal. <laughs> you're, oh, in a way, you're correct. Let's talk about something very strange that's going on uh, in a couple of different storylines. Uh, one that I think is really hurting the storyline. Uh, the one I can't tell you what the hell the storyline is. Uh, that's what, what's going on with Randy Orton? What is this? What, what is this? Is this his new psychopath, Randy Orton? I think. Is he a new fiend? No, I. Is he I, like the. 
Split personality. The Viper Fiend split personality. He's I just hit my it. best friend, and then he hits him again. What is this? I think I think this is their attempt to give us that that weird phase where Randy was a real dark and angry guy and just took everybody out. This is their attempt to rehash that. I like it just because it's Randy as a heel, not Randy as a face. Randy needs to be a heel. You're absolutely yeah. correct about that. Randy just should never. He should just be a heel. He's just better at it. And doing the concertos is cool. I yeah. think it's setting up. Hardy's some, out there with a neck brace on, getting lumped up. I mean, I'm like really? Well, I mean, and then, then tw I mean, 20 minutes later, he's still contemplating whether he's going to hit him with a chair again. Yeah. I'm like, really? He actually encouraging him to hit yeah. Hardy with a chair because it's Randy Orton. I yeah, think that were, mean, that they, means they were chanting one more time. One but more I think time. that means the storyline isn't working. Right. It, and people would say, well, that's working. It's not working. You know, they should be booing him and throwing stuff at him. But think, people, think, people are loving him. Destroying older wrestlers. I think Randy ha has to do it to someone a little more popular to make it make it be whatever they want it to be. Like Ricochet, maybe if he does it to him, that might. Fix Ricochet's it. getting jobbed, and he's working this thing with the AOP right now, or whatever that was. Yeah. What is the AOP? Let's talk about that uh -oh. right now. All right, the Monday Night Messiah gives Seth the microphone for 45 minutes getting old it's fast. getting old fast again Ray but you, that's your boy that's not <laughs> my boy <laughs> I won't go that far it's his boy Seth Seth's a great heel but this Monday night Messiah thing is that's cool it, too I like the Monday night I like the Monday night Messiah angle it doesn't work when when you have a tag team but you and the young lackey are the tag champions then what's right. the point of having AOP a part of the faction. I don't even know what AOP stands for, and I don't care. I don't want anybody to tell me or send me emails. I don't care. Our, our, what? Authors of Authors of Pain. Of pain. <laughs> it, it, used to, it used to sound cool. Now, no. No, it doesn't sound cool. Yes, it does. <clears throat> authors of Pain. Okay, Authors of Pain. Authors of Pain. AO Boring. It's boring. <laughs> it's boring. They need to just let them be a tag team. It's boring. Speaking of boring, that finally actually became something to watch is Aleister Black actually fought somebody that actually has ring experience oh. for more than two months. And they actually brought Rowan into the ring with him, who actually has ring experience. And we didn't have to see no baddie fruit cage or whatever that thing was. And <laughs> they still had it there. They still had it's it there, there, but it wasn't. <laughs> but we actually got to see Aleister Black in a great match. And it was a good match between him and Rowan. Rowan actually put on a good show out there. Alistair Black finally, you know, he had of course he was going to win. Yeah, he's had he's had good matches with Buddy Murphy. When? When? A year he ago? That pay per view. You, you said it at the last pay per view party. That's right. I must have forgot. <laughs> that's how exciting it was. But that yeah, but that's more that. the Alistair Black I'd like to see. It, they're using Rowan too. If I'm Rowan, I'm like, hey, really, this is what you got for me? A, a cage thing, and I'm losing out to Black. I mean, come on. That's he what should, they've been. He doing should be happy. Them. He still has a job. We mean, he should still be happy as a job. It's all. About, you got a guy that side. He's just like this. I'm at a football game. Okay, high school football game. I see a six foot five kid, 290 pounds, on the sideline, sitting on the bench. And I'm like, why isn't that kid in the game? Why isn't that kid? He's not athletic enough. He's not coachable enough. Let me tell you what, if he, that six foot five kid is 240 pounds, can't be in that, he's not even gonna be on the field. He's not even gonna be on the bench. You know, you make him into something and give him the tools to make him into something, or just get rid of him. I'm saying there's plenty of other talent that they could put on TV. Like, like what? Like, you could put Cedric Alexander back on TV, Apollo Crews can go back on TV, there's a ton they of brought guys. MVP back on. I know. Which I, I like MVP. He's funny, witty, but the whole Drew McIntyre MVP thing again. Yeah, that's black. What? It, it served its purpose, I guess, but it just we didn't need that. How many more talk shows do we need on in WWE too? None. Do we need at least twenty more? It seem, it seems like everybody has one. It seems now. like everybody has one now. So, all right, we're gonna take a real quick break. Actually, you know what? Uh, yeah. You know what? We're going to take a real quick break. We're going to talk about women's division uh, in WWE. There's a couple things going on there right now. One, I'm like, what? And then the other ones, I'm like, ah! So we'll see what happens there.
All right, folks, going to be right back. More Lonnie Boys Hot Show. Hang in there. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Lonnie Boy's House Show. I am Lonnie Boy. Uh, to my left again, Mafia Bob, and to my right, right hook Ray. And uh, here we go. We're going to talk about the women's division, WWE, right now. Again, we're back to banks or no banks. I mean, rumor, rumor has it uh, that you know, again, a disagreement about creative, and you know, more backstage stuff and animus, and boom, on the bench, on the bench. And again, we have a situation here. You've got young stars that are coming up in WWE. Do we have a potential Wally Pip situation here? Uh, right hook right. I was just gonna ask, is is this is this behavior gonna make things worse for her? Because she does belong on television. She's great talent. Or is this some kind of a ruse for something else? I've been thinking about it. it. Might be a kind of a ruse to where it turns that she finally gets back and had enough of Bailey, <laughs> and they start actually. You know, everybody's been waiting for five, six years. But like, for how the many, turn on Bailey? But how many times have we teased her? Yeah, no. We've been chasing that laser light for for a while. Isn't so. she doing her rap album? I think that was a joke. I mean, I, mean, I, I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not even. I, I think that was just a joke. I can almost confidently say that she's probably better than Cardi B in some of the rap out there. <laughs> You, there will be no Cardi B bashing on this show. Actually, I don't like Cardi B either. Oh, so, no. so, anyway, I mean, right now Banks is like I said, she's losing prime time. They got Naomi back this into the mix, and you know Natalia's running fine. Now, Lacey Evans, I don't know what Lacey Evans. She hurt her. I don't know, but it seems like I haven't seen her on the card the last couple weeks. But so. isn't it ironic that like they, I don't know, they might watch our show. And pick up on your idea to make her a face and do the whole G.I. Jane thing. They've started, you know, They've started, started moving that, in that uh, direction. Yeah. Which, again, if I'm like a business manager, I'm, I'm like the Kevin Tomini of Armstrong here that's all about making money. I'm going to say put that on a T-shirt with Lacey Evans. You know, Sergeant Slaughter, look how much weight that carried. You know, America loves a winner. Am I right or wrong? Yep. You know, and they love their soldiers. And yep. she was a Marine. So, I mean, you can't deny the fact that that would sell a lot of T-shirts. You know, I'm into business. I'm into exploiting people's patriotism. That's where I'm going. But as a person. A Marine, a, a mom, female role model. I think so. Exactly. Like, and she's got some chops in the ring. Yeah, she's still yeah. getting there. Um, but like I said, with the thing with Sasha Banks, so I think it's not, I, you know, again, uh, time away is no good, you know, from, from the spotlight. And. Uh, Put Sasha on television. It seems yes. like after that uh, pay-per-view with her and Becky, anything after that, she was just playing the little lackey do basically the whole time. Like, just following her everywhere. She never had any real matches after that. It was Which is a good role reverse because normally it was Bailey following Sasha and now Sasha following Bailey to make Bailey be what, honestly, she should be. <laughs> what I saw <laughs> last Friday night when Bailey. Uh, defended her title against Carmella, which was a great match. Actually, one of the best matches I've seen since Becky and Sasha in the Elimination Thank Chamber. Um, that was one of the best physical, violent matches I've seen in a long time. But again, the preamble carried on too long and the postamble carried on too long. Then they brought Naomi in. That's cool, too. Trying to add a little bit of a twist there. I get it. But again, what I saw that night was Bailey standing all by herself. Which is there is no need for Sasha to be there. No, and that's that's how I felt, and that's how I saw it. And they're great together. I think it'd be a um, smart move to move Sasha to Raw because they need. Actually, uh, DK Dan Kitchen said moving Sasha to NXT would be a good move. I mean, I'd be all for that too. That's like getting sent down, though. No, it's not. Yeah, it is. No. In your opinion, it is. <laughs> no, it's not. not. Opinion. My opinion it would be. It's not. It, it, it isn't when NXT is the superior brand out of the three right now. It's not. They're not the superior brand, obviously. They are. They're, they're, they're dull. <laughs> um, Your version of dull is now, saying Orange Cassidy is exciting. Now, the Elias, the Elias is actually, uh, with the Sammy Zayn, they finally got Sammy Zayn working in something that he can actually have some fun with. And this whole thing with uh, Elias is actually hilarious. 
and I like it. They're giving Elias some time. The entertainment value, that is much better than somebody with a lot of water on their hair wearing black dark clothing saying, hey, my revenge will come from the pits of hell and then the devil and Satan will take you over and I'll claim my victory over your breathing body. I, you know, seriously, that's, I seriously hope the Undertaker's out there and saw that and, and will punch you in the face. Maybe. Undertaker's Undertaker. You just described. Undertaker was athletic. Undertaker, you remember yeah. Undertaker? Six foot nine and he would walk across the side of the ropes. He did matches that these guys would never even dream of taking. I, He's not a dark wizard from Harry Potter. He's the Undertaker. I know that. I watched it too. I know. He didn't need a magic <laughs> wand. <laughs> He didn't need a magic wand. You, you you gotta let go of this Harry Potter issue. Well, some of them look like they're characters from Harry Potter. They work, they work at Gringotts. You know, where's my gold? I don't. I just don't get it. You know. <laughs> oh, it's like two steps forward and three steps back. Man, oh man. Uh, Rhea Ripley, undoubtedly one of my favorite wrestlers coming up. Now they got her Nellig. Now they got her matched up with with Charlotte Flair. Which, which, well, which two nice. big physical women. Which is nice that Charlotte wins the Rumble and she's going after this title instead of where everyone thought. Right, exactly. That's kind of strange, but Ripley, though, this could be a good match, except I want to see the matches. I don't want to see no more talking. Yeah. They, they, they Stop had, the talking. They had, they had a skirmish Sunday on, on uh, TakeOver. Yeah, but you know what? Oh, yeah. A, a five-minute skirmish is cool. You know, what like I said, you, just... Do you really think they let Charlotte win the belt, though? No. no, I mean, no. I mean, never say never, but I, I don't see it. But again, Ripley's an up and coming. Up and coming, uh, up and, coming. And, and she's very popular right now. And Shayna Baszler comes into the ring and bites Becky Lynch on the back of the neck. Yeah. I know Moffy Ball was kind of into that. Uh, what were you to that? It was too hokey. Yeah, it, that's how I felt. Well, she drove herself away in the ambulance. I was died. I'm like, only Becky Lynch drives herself away in the ambulance. And then and, drove it back. And, and then, then drove it back. I absolutely hated that. <laughs> I hated it because that's just another attempt to make her oh, my stone Lord. cold kill Bill Becky Lynch. It's overdone. You're overdoing it. She's not that popular anymore to get that Steve Austin feel. Yeah. Just stop and. Baszler doing like a Walking Dead thing is kind of cool when she could have just came in and just broke her arm because Shayna Baszler's a badass. Shayna Baszler's a tough cookie, there's no doubt about it. So, <laughs> yeah, the whole biting thing, I'm still not there yet. Maybe you get some shots, uh, clear that up or whatever. <laughs> so, all right, folks, uh, we're going to be right back uh, here on the uh, Lonnie Boys House Show. What is this, our fifth episode now? I believe so. Let's go to our executive producer. Yes, it is. He actually responded. <laughs> It's like a Christmas miracle. All right, folks, we're going to be right back with Stars on Thumbs. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, because we can't afford, uh, again, uh, real uh, superstars here, and pay them to come in and do the show. We present to you now uh, Stars on Thumbs. And our guest this week is Drew McIntyre. Oh, there we go. Uh, you got a good shot of Drew there? Oh, there we go. Hey, Drew, how you doing? Oh, look at me. I'm I'm Drew McIntyre. Oh, I'm the baddest man in WWE right now. Oh, hi. I'm going to kick you with a cannonball claymore super haggish shot punch to the face. I'm going to talk and jump on the rope. Look at my abdomens. They're beautiful. Am I going to wrestle? No. I'm going to come out here and talk to MVP. The writers want me to be a Scottish version of Roman Reigns. Oh, I am Scottish. Look at me. I'm Drew McIntyre. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, here's a... Our very special guest, Drew McIntyre with Stars on Thumbs. Thank you very much. Yay, Stars on Thumbs! Yeah! All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was some great stuff in action uh, with uh, Stars on Thumbs. One of our most popular uh, episodes we have here on Lonnie Boy's House Show. So uh, this is... The how, uh, the how to Train a Dragon <laughs> The How to Train a Dragon version. My Scottish impersonations are incredible. So we don't have the money to bring in the real superstars here. But speaking of money, Mafia Bob, um, not that I want Ray to hear this conversation, but yeah. 
you know, we put out a big buffet, a big spread for the last pay-per-view. That's right. I mean, we're talking about tons of food. Uh, Summer Ray's favorite drinks. Summer Ray's favorite beverages, refreshments. Guess who doesn't show up for the pay-per-view? I was under the weather. I'm sorry. White Hook Ray doesn't show up. Nope. Oh, no, no, no. He was uh, was at the trampoline park up in Erie. I got the info on it. Nope. So, anyway. The whole crew of his went up there. You'll yeah. never see that. You will never see that. But that was disappointing, though. Mm-hmm. And my wife, and actually, I think I got a message from Ray saying that he didn't like the crab cakes that he had last time at the pay-per-view, and that's why he didn't and show up. Because I'm allergic to seafood. Oh, you're not allergic to seafood. <laughs> you're just being... My wife is angry. And on the way home, he said that, too. Yeah, I know. I heard that, you jerk. Hey, oh, hey, hey. Whoa. What's up, Bob? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> ah! <laughs> It's all your fault, Juan. Oh, you shouldn't say anything about a crab cakes. And now, let's enjoy an intermission. Good Lord. That woman's a menace. You know, you know, next time you be polite and you talk to her yourself, Ray. Or, I don't know, don't say anything? <laughs> what do you mean I gotta tell her something? No, you don't. She gave me the, the third degree. I mean, she was like, uh, and? she was like Irving S. Schuster or Shyster. <laughs> she was like the IRS. I might have to go to urgent care. Man, alive. Hey, I don't want to hear that. Muffy Bob got, got banged like up. Three times now in these episodes. Yeah, I'm but, telling you, my neck is killing me now. So anyway. Yeah, but I'm valuable. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's uh, talk about our final thoughts and direction we're seeing. we got the two pay-per-views coming up. Uh, we got the uh, Elimination Chamber, which I hope, again, we get a good Elimination Chamber. We usually do. We actually got a decent one last year, a decent one. So, again, uh, I'd like to see, you know, the setup. Yeah, I, I don't know. Ray, give me your thoughts on that. I'm hopeful. Elimination Chamber. Oh, God, this hurts. I'm telling you, you got, we got wailed on. Yeah. <laughs> That's because you deserved it. I don't like your crab cakes, Mrs. Wilson. That's what happens. Yeah, when I'm allergic to seafood. <laughs> Sometimes you just take one for the Sometimes team. Sometimes you take a little Benadryl and you take it for the team. I do. <laughs> well, I didn't have that on me. So. Oh, okay. You could have asked. Sure. Okay. <laughs> sure. Give me your thoughts on uh, the Elimination Chamber. A uh, little hopeful. I think something good will come out of it. Somehow, some way. Uh, I'm going to make a bold prediction that Brock makes an appearance. Because when else is he really going to make it in no, That's your boy. So It used to be. Then then he started ranching and being a jerk and, and everything. That's what we have now. Brock Lesnar literally has not changed. See, they had Heyman on last night. Just Heyman. Yeah. Isn't, isn't that usually the formula? <laughs> no. They usually at least bring Brock out to stand there and shake his head and go like this. I think he'll be there. Uh, the Saudi show, I, I'm i sorry, guys. I don't care for it. It's just pointless. It's on Thursday, too, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's on what? In the Thursday afternoon. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like yeah. One or two Ooh. o'clock. <laughs> well, I work, so. So do we. And I don't, I, I won't lose much sleep. Okay. If, <laughs> if I miss it. Alrighty, and then uh, WrestleMania. Um, at this point last year, I had a little bit more anticipation going into WrestleMania. At this point right now, I'm not seeing any real direction for him. It's going to like get me hard charged right now for a big uh, WrestleMania match. I'm going to give it to around the Elimination Chamber to see if they really start pulling out surprises and making it more like feel like a WrestleMania, not just another long pay-per-view. Can we not do a three and a half plus hour show, please? Like I, I look, I love, I love it much as everybody else. With five hours, is a lot to commit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Especially, especially if it's going to be like John Cena versus Elias or something. Yeah, it's you know? I mean, how long does that need to go on? Because you know what's going to happen there. There's no no big yeah. surprise. Like just, and that's the best you could do for Elias too. Just a, a yeah. simple thing. Less is more. All right, Mafia Bob, do you have any final thoughts as uh, we're uh, getting ready to wrap things up here? I, I'm still worried about. Her. Oh, we didn't Raise. do we didn't do Ray's beef. 
Oh. Ray's uh, theory with Goldberg yeah. and the Fiend. I hope that that's not gonna happen. I want the Fiend thing to keep rolling. He's. I can't see how. Keep it would. rolling. Yeah. It's growing. It's, it's, it's getting better right now. That's probably. <laughs> To me, it's the best storyline. I could do a better voice right for now. the. I could do a better voice for the German pig, though. <laughs> so that's all I can say. Really, the pig's awesome. He is. He is. But I could do a better German voice than that. So have you? Uh, have you uh, done the muscle man dance? Yes, I have actually. I've done the muscle man dance. Yeah, I'm qualified now. I think I'm a firefly. <laughs> Yowie wowie! I know. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Amazing. So, do you have a beef today? This week. Oh. Beef slash out out, I guess. All right, uh, um, ladies and gentlemen, let's open up Ray's Beefs. Well, my beef this week has probably been a good one for a while. Just the presentation. And you could tell there's a difference even in, between segments of each show. Like, like AEW. You'll get the wacky, crazy tag match. Orange Cassidy falls off the top. Who loves Orange and then, I love Orange Cassidy. And then next segment, it's a great pro wrestling presentation. I'm just a fan of just keeping things consistent. And rolling. Just keep the wrestling. action rolling. Keep the action rolling. Less is more. We don't need matches to go through multiple commercials all the time. A uh, little less talking couldn't hurt. But... Since it's, it's entertainment, I get it, it's fine, but it doesn't help the product. And uh, just let these athletes be themselves. That That's probably the best Ex part of the presentation. That is exactly, uh, that is a great point. And then a quick shout out to John Stearns. And if you're a fan of good independent <laughs> wrestling, check out American Coliseum Wrestling and the Squared Circle Project. Great stuff. You might you, do, you might see some old faces. You might see some new faces. Excellent. All right, and don't forget to check out uh, Lonnie Boys Out Show on Facebook. Give us a like. Uh, check out Armstrong's uh, hometown favorites. Go to YouTube and uh, check out hometown favorites Armstrong. You'll be able to watch all of our episodes because we and are leave some we comments. Are over. That's right. We're dominant right now. <laughs> We're dominant in the Armstrong family. How do you like that? Pectoral muscle bump. Oh, oh, oh. All right, that's all I got. So, Mafia Bob, anything to wrap up? No, no I'm just excited for WrestleMania. So am I, and we're actually uh, going to be going down uh, in March down to Youngstown for the uh, house show uh, with yeah. WWE. So, looking forward to that. Mm -hmm. All right, folks, this is uh, Lonnie Boy's house show. I'm Lonnie Boy. Mafia Th Bob. This is Mafia Bob. That's <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> and that's right on Bray. I'll see you guys later. Take care.